So um, my sense last time was that uh, things were a little shaky on what we were talking about. So um, basically my idea is we're going to um, just start from uh, introducing the assignment operator concept again. So basically what we had going was um, we had this picture at, at, at line 19. This was the situation that we had. That was the picture. Item one was five screwdriver. Item two was nine amp. Um, so then um, when we execute these eight lines here, we found out that what happens when I say item one gets item two is the units got equal to nine and the description just ended up pointing down here, right? So then later on, when we change, you called item two dot set info, um, that, that uh, had the effect of actually also changing item one's description. So when we do the assignment, what we want, we don't want to change this pointer. So it points down here. We want to um, create a whole new copy of the hammer and make this pointer point to it, okay? So we're gonna do that by overloading the assignment operator. Let me just uh, run this as it is real quick one time, just so you can. See what I'm talking about? Oops, what do you do? Oh. What I have, a, I think I just have a stray variable someplace. Let me try to save it. Yes. Okay, so you can see here that after setting item one to item two, and then we set the info on item two, it changes both item one and item two to lot one. Everyone understand why that's happening? It's because we ended up with this situation. Because that's what the default built-in assignment operator does. It just does a member-wise assignment. Okay. Um, all right, so what we wanna do is we want to write an overloaded assignment operator that creates a whole new um, array here to store a copy of hammer and then makes description point to that. And then we'll also have to make sure that we delete this old screwdriver array here. Um, Uh, sure. Okay, so um, any questions about what it is we're trying to do here with our overloaded assignment operator? We need to create a new array here, copy hammer into it, and we'll uh, make new description point to that new array. And we also need to deallocate this old array that had screwdriver in it. One question you may have is, why don't we just copy hammer into where screwdriver is? And as a matter of fact, in this particular case, that would work. Um, but the problem is, we don't know whether this array is big enough to hold whatever it is we're copying into. So uh, it's really gonna be best to just create a whole new array uh, and deallocate the old one. Um, Okay, so let's go look at our um, assignment operator, um, the prototype. It's gonna look like this.
Okay. Um, I want you to take a minute and just look at this and let me know if you have, oops, sorry, that shouldn't be there. We don't need that there because we're already inside the scope of the inventory item class. So we don't need to tell the compiler that uh, we're in the scope of the inventory item class. Um, any questions about any parts of this prototype? Okay, so in, if we look at main here, item one is gonna be the calling object. So our objective is to copy right into the calling object. Um, and then um, it turns out that the assignment operator also uh, can evaluate to um, whatever got assigned. So that's why we return an inventory item uh, object. Any questions about that? Uh, well, so for the insertion operator, we are inserting something into an, uh, so I guess you're talking about the return type. Um, the reason that we used O string with the insertion operator is that's the type of value that it returns, right? If we look at our client and we, Look at where we're using the insertion operator to print an item, right? Well, every time we use the insertion operator, what it needs to return is its left operand. And that's something of type O string. Um, and then uh, I think the reason that we use friend is the same reason that we always use friend. Um, and so I think. Um, I'm going to go with that explanation for now, um, and just in the interest of time. Um, but it just turns out that for for uh, the assignment operator, it's not one of those situations where we need to use friend. Um, we're always going to have an inventory item object on the left side of the assignment operator, so we don't need to use friend. Okay. Um, so going over to our implementation file, um, I'm, if I was really doing this, I'd probably put it at the bottom of the file so that the function definitions are in the same order as the prototypes. But I think just to keep things simple, I'm going to put, uh, insert things at the top here. Scope. So this is going to be in the scope of the inventory item class. Um, Okay, so my first shot at this is just going to say that it's going to be very similar to the set info function. Uh, we're just going to say the units of the client object gets the units of write. Okay, and I want to stop there because that's like the super basic starting point. If you don't understand that statement, none of the rest of this is going to make any sense. So. Are we okay with this one? We're still. So that's that's basically. If we look at our picture. That's saying um, uh, item one dot units gets item two dot units, right? Calling object gets right. Anybody want me to talk more about that? Okay. Uh, all right. I guess I'll just keep. So now we want to do basically the same thing with uh, description, um, but as I've said a few times, you can't just say description gives right dot description. Right? That's what the that's what the um, 
uh, the default assignment operator is doing. That's what we're trying to change. So what I have here in my assignment operator is, is just a number wise assignment, which is exactly what the default assignment operator does anyway. So what we need to do here, instead of just an assignment, is we're going to um, create a new array for description to point out. Uh, so remember that's, this is the line of code that's gonna do what I said when I was drawing the picture. I said, we need to create a new array here that we're gonna copy hammer into. Um, how big do we need to make that array? Well, we need to make it the size of write dot description, right? Yeah. Because write dot description is big. So I'm gonna say sterling write dot description plus one for the null character because the sterling function returns the number of characters in the string, not including the null character. Okay. Um, so, of course, it turns out that there's a conference at the hotel. So, people keep coming in and asking where the conference is. I'm hoping that that won't end soon. Um, okay, so this is what we do to create our new um, array here. So, that's just. Uh, There's our new array, right? And because of the assignment here, it also makes this pointer point to the newly allocated array. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, with that. All right. Anything we forgot to do? So is units not not oh. Well, I haven't I haven't actually changed it in the picture yet, but yeah, you're right. After saying units gets right dot units, units is not. Yeah. Well, go ahead and do that. So, so, yeah, yeah. You have to delete the old one. Yes, exactly. So what we forgot to do is before this statement here that I just typed on line eight, we need to uh, deallocate the screwdriver array because otherwise it's inaccessible. After line eight, we have no way of going back and finding this memory, and so it's just a it's a memory leak, um, meaning that we uh, it's it's uh, it's gone. We no longer are going to be able to use it. So we want to deallocate it first before line eight. So coming back here, we're going to say. Let me say delete okay and let me just remind you about the delete operator um, it's not deleting anything it's deallocating something and what is deallocating is not description what is deallocating is the memory that description is pointing at Okay, so um, after we say delete description, um, that means this memory here has been deallocated. I'm gonna indicate that by marking it yellow. So yellow means that this memory is, I didn't do a very good job of making yellow. Oh, wrong. Okay, so yellow means that that memory is now deallocated and, um, and uh, the next time I use the new operator, uh, the computer could um, use that memory uh, to allocate the new memory that I'm asking it to allocate. 
Okay. How are we doing on volume? Did you, could everyone hear that last sentence? Okay. Um, okay, so what's left to do is we just need to, um, now we need to copy Hammer into this new array that we've just allocated. So just to copy. Okay. Um, and just to review, there's a couple of kind of red flag warnings that I um, tell you to watch out for. Um, I have told you every time you have pointer assignment, you need to stop and think about whether you need to deallocate what that pointer was pointing at before, before you assign it to something new. Okay, so that's a stop and think. And then every time you use stir copy, you need to stop and think, is my first argument big enough? Have I allocated enough memory for that first argument to store whatever's in the second argument? Okay, so those are two sort of, every time you use stir copy, stop and think. Every time you do pointer assignment, stop and think. Um, okay. So this is the, the basic idea for assignment. Um, we are going to um, have a few uh, details we need to uh, tighten up on it though. Um, the first one is that uh, the assignment operator returns something. No, that's a good point. Um, in fact, add that to your list of sort of list of reply. Never going to use the delete uh, in a constructor. And just to be super technical for a second, delete is actually um, an operator. Uh, I know that's weird. Most of our operators don't look like words, they look like symbols, but uh, delete and new are actually operators. Okay, so the words to live by that I just said were uh, you're never going to use the delete operator in a constructor. Okay. Um, so I, I, let me just say that I, I wouldn't stake my life on that. Um, someone might be able to come up with an example where you would want to use a, de a destructor, uh, the delete keyword in a constructor, um, but I can't think of any uh, situation like that. So um, I think you're pretty safe uh, going with that rule for now anyway. Um, okay, so I was saying that the um, assignment operator, when we use it, so here we are, we're just gonna review a little bit about how the assignment operator works. Um, Okay, so this is just a little example to demonstrate something that I want to tell you about the assignment operator in general. Um, and that is the fact that the, uh, you can, even though this is weird, right, and I would not recommend it, technically speaking, you can use the assignment operator uh, um, as uh, uh, an expression, right? And if you do, it evaluates to whatever the value is that got assigned. So what that means in this case is that if I executed this code, seven would get printed in the console window. Um, and so what that means for us in the assignment operator is that we need to return the left operand. So after we're done with everything else in the assignment operator, we're just gonna return the left operand because that's what the assignment operator evaluates to. Okay, so uh, I'm not even gonna run this. I think you guys understand what I'm saying now. So in the assignment operator, we 
we are going to, oops, that's not where I meant to go. Hold on. In the assignment operator, we are going to the bottom and to return star this. Oops. Okay. Any questions about that? Oh, you know what? I never did. I never in my picture. I never updated my picture uh, to reflect the results of the stir copy, right? So once we do the stir copy, our picture is going to look like. So. Um, and so, and this is the picture is, after I say item one gets item two, this is the picture I want. So we're good. Um, so just to, just to back up a, a little bit again, to, to give you a big picture of where we're going with this. This part of the assignment operator, I said, that's basically the core that gets the job done, right? And then I said, there are gonna be three other details we need to keep track of for the or handle for the assignment operator. Um, and that's just another, there's another rule for you, right? Uh, whenever you write an assignment operator, you need to do the job of assignment, but then there's gonna be these three other details that you need to think through. One is you need to return the calling object. Um, second one is, um, hold on, I'm supposed to know what the second one is. Uh, you know what? I think maybe I was thinking of the of the delete as the second one. So maybe there's only two other details to be tracked of. So, anyway, okay. So um, bottom line is at this point we have one more detail to take care of, and that is we need to think about what happens if um, the assignment operator is used to assign something to itself. And I know that sounds kind of odd like why would we ever anyone ever do that um but let me just add a couple lines to the client Okay, so um, I want to I want to justify the fact that we need to handle this situation in two ways. One is, even though this is really weird, why would anyone ever do it? We still our our, our assignment operators should still work and not crash the program or something if someone attempts this, right? But secondly, um, because uh, it turns out that um, you know you can have two different pointers pointing at the same object. Um, it's not uncommon in programs to have the situation come up even though it's not this explicit. So, for, so um, anyway, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it at that and say that we have to make sure that our, our assignment operator is gonna do the right thing. If uh, the calling object, the left operand and the right operand are actually the same object. Let's see what happens right now if we try this. Uh, okay, that's interesting. It actually worked.
Okay, well, uh, it worked. And I, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest here. I've, I've done this example probably hundreds of times and it has never worked in the past. <laughs> um, so let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. Um, right. Yeah, what am I doing? I, I must be doing something weird that's causing it to, um, to get the right output here. Did I already fix this and I forgot? So I would, yeah, let's, let's, let's go over why it should not, should not work. Um, so let's look at our picture and let's look at our, our assignment operator here, right? So the picture as it used to be was, oops. Oh no, I guess this is the picture now, nine camera, right? Because I already did the assignment, okay. So what we've got is um, units gets right dot units. So the item one is the calling object and item one is also right. So when I say units gets right dot units, I'm saying item one dot unit gets item one dot units. So that's no problem, that just stays nine, okay? Um, the next thing I do is I say delete description. So what that means is I have deallocated this piece of memory right here, right? So later on, when I call stir copy, what I'm copying from is memory that has been deallocated, okay? Now that's always a weird thing when you try to, when you, um, accidentally do something with memory that has been deallocated. Um, yes, exactly, that's right, Kyle. Um, so 99% um, of the time, what's gonna happen here is when I deallocate that memory, uh, other stuff is gonna happen to it, right? But I think the reason that this is working, and I don't want the fact that it's actually not working to make things too complex for us here, but um, what's actually happening is that even though I've deallocated this memory, the same contents are still just sitting there. And so when I call stir copy, it copies the right thing. Um, but as uh, if you trust me, and if you trust the, the two other students who said they actually just tried this out and got the wrong, uh, the wrong output, um, uh, you'll know that that's, I just got lucky, right? Um, what happens if we rerun it? I have a feeling we're gonna keep getting the same thing. But, um, it's worth a try. Um, but yeah. yeah, same thing. Very interesting. Anyway, yes, got a lottery ticket. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I could go to Vegas. Um, all right. So um, let's just talk about how we're going to fix that problem. Okay. The problem being that when I call delete here, I'm deallocating something that I don't want to deallocate, right? So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, let me go back to my original picture. So this is not deallocated. And I'm just going to right here, I'm going to say, before I do anything, I'm going to say if um, the objects are not uh, sorry, can you say how to say this? Let's start this and write name. And then I'm just going to skip all that if they're the same object, right? Because if they're the same object, I don't want to do anything at all, except I still need to return. Okay. Now, this in here can be a little tricky. Oh, I meant to put another angle back on the right side. Um, first of all, I guess, first of all, let me stop there and ask if there are any questions about why I want to say that. This is just called. Uh, checking for self assignment. Okay. 
Um, so uh, you have to be careful here. One, uh, one, maybe the first instinct might be to say this, which star of this is equal to that. Okay. Um, there's a couple problems with that. One is um, this is comparing, this is using the equals to operator to compare, compare inventory item objects. And we haven't overloaded the equals to operator uh, to compare inventory item objects. So um, that's not going to work. Um, However, even if we did overload the, assign the uh, equals to operator to compare inventory item objects, this would still be a bad idea because what we're doing here is we're, we're checking to see if the um, objects are equal, but what we really want to do is we want to check to see if they are actually the same object in the Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say if this which is a pointer to the column object is equal to the address of right. Okay, so what that's saying is that if the memory address of the calling object is equal to the memory address of the right parameter. So in other words, if they are occupying exactly the same memory, then we're not going to do the assignment. We're just gonna leave it alone, okay? Let me just say that a lot of this may seem kind of complicated, but um, but it's uh, you don't in, in in one sense you don't really even need to understand what's going on here to get this right. Right, you could just put this at the top of every assignment operator you ever overload, and you'll be fine. Right, and just um, return star this at the bottom of every um, assignment operator you ever overload. Okay, so I think we're done with our assignment operator now. I'm almost afraid to run it again because I'm afraid that it, I'm going to get unexpected <laughs> results. But let me let's go ahead and um, just make sure we didn't break it. Right. All right. Now I'm really confused. So at this point, item one is five screwdriver. Oh, I, oh, this whole time item one has been. Uh, did I do this backwards? Oh, this is supposed to be not equals to. <laughs> Ooh, okay, glad I checked that. Okay, does that make sense? Basically what I said is, if they, only if they are the same object, do all of this, right? And what I was supposed to say is, only if they aren't the same object, do all of the copying. Um, okay. All right, now we're good. Okay, any questions about that? I'm curious why we did, oh yeah, right, right. How come we said we're going to do else in the function? Uh, well, because there's no place else in the function where we would want to use ampersand. I mean, I said, I guess I would raise that question as, um, so that question would make a lot more sense to me if it was just, how can we use ampersand for right? And then full stop. Um, and because the answer to why don't we use it anywhere else in the function is that there's no place else in the function <laughs> that it belongs. But uh, so just to review why we used it in front of right, um, I started with this 
because I thought this is usually what um, is most instinctively, that students would instinctively would try, right? Just check to see if the objects are already, uh, if, the, if the two objects are equal, right? But uh, the problem with this is that the not equals to operator has not been defined for inventory item objects. And also, um, the situation we really want to check for here, it doesn't matter to us if the calling object is equal to um, the, the parameter. What matters to us is if they are actually the same, occupying the same memory, right? If they are actually the same object. This just checks to see, this, this would be, this is checks to see if the two objects are equal. I want to know if they are actually the same object. So I'm going to check to see if the address of the calling object is equal to the address of the parameter. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is not passed by that reference. This is what you think. Right. That's a good point. The, the ampersand is being is used in several completely different ways in C++, right? And in this case, we're not using it as a pass by reference. This has nothing to do with pass by reference, right? Here, this is just saying this is the address of operator. Which kind of make, I mean, we haven't used it since we introduced it briefly back in lesson 12, I think. So it would make sense if that was a little. Um, okay, any questions about the assignment operator? Okay, um, I'm gonna, um, so uh, it turns out that whenever we use um, dynamic memory in a class, there are three member functions that we're going to have to provide to handle special situations like this. Okay. And um, when I learned this, I was taught that these were called the big three. Um, I'm not sure if that's common terminology, although I think you could probably find it if you Googled it, but that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call these the big three. Um, I think when I Google this, sometimes I get uh, some people call it the, uh, the rule of three. So if you Google like C++ rule of three, uh, you'll get um, these three functions. Um, but basically the assignment operator is the first of those three. Okay, so um, basically 90% of what we need to cover for the rest of this lesson is I need to tell you what the other two are. Um, turns out the assignment operator is also by far the most complicated of the three. So, um, so I guess that, you know, just to give you a, a little bit of uh, good news. Um, so does that make sense? That's kind of, I, I just took a step back there and gave you kind of a big picture view of where we're headed with this. The assignment operator is the first of three functions that we're gonna need to provide every time we're writing a class that uses dynamic memory. Um, okay, let me tell you what the second of those three functions is. Um, but I'm going to kind of try to motivate it before I just tell you. Um,
I actually think though, uh, no, let's, uh, let's, let's give that a try. Um, okay, and so that means I'm actually uh, at creating a new function here named that. So the idea here is that because this is passed by value, it is not going to change item one, right? If, if it changes item one, then we have a problem. Uh, oh, forgot my prototype. Okay, after being used as an argument to a pass by value parameter, item one is still nine pizza. Okay, so something bad happened there, right? For some reason, when we called F, item one changed. So the pass by value mechanism is not working. We have broken it somehow. Um, basically, what's happening is this. When I pass anything by value in C++, a copy is made of it. Um, but how does C++ know how to make a copy of an inventory item object? Well, it does the same thing that it did with the assignment operator, which it just does a member-wise copy, which means that really, we've got exactly the same situation that we had with the assignment operator, right? When I pass item one down to, um, let me actually spell this out. So here's function F's, uh, let me just call it like my item, right? And my item, um, is a copy because it's a parameter, a pass by value parameter. It's going to be a copy of the corresponding argument, which was item one. So when I say it's a copy of item one, that means it's a member wise copy because that's all C knows how to do. So the units is going to be nine, and the description is going to be a copy of this memory address, which means we're just getting a pointer to the same thing that item one dot description was pointing at. Right? So down here inside my function, when I say my item dot set info, I'm changing this, which means that I'm actually also changing item one back up here in main. So the problem is this. We need to tell C++ that when it makes a copy of an inventory item, it needs to do a deep copy instead of a shallow copy. Um, I should have introduced that terminology um, earlier. Uh, so let me just do it now, right? And when we were working on the assignment operator, the default assignment operator that wasn't doing what we needed it to do was doing a shallow copy. It was just copying, an underwise copy, copying the memory address shallow copy and what we needed to, to do was call the deep copy don't just copy the memory address copy this thing that the memory address is pointing at so deep copy same exact situation for when c makes a copy of an object so in c uh we can um overload the default behavior by providing what's called a copy constructor. Uh, let me 
orders. So basically what that means is we're just, we're gonna provide another constructor whose parameter is an inventory item object. And so what's gonna happen is once we provide that um, constructor, whenever C++ needs to make a copy of an, of an inventory item object for some reason, it's going to call that constructor instead of using its default behavior. So let me just put it right here. Okay. And so it turns out that this is basically exactly the same as the assignment operator, except simpler, right? We don't need to worry about the self-assignment. We don't return anything because this is a constructor. We don't delete anything because this is a constructor. So basically what's going to happen is we just need um, those three lines, except it's, no, let me just change this to red. Okay, so it's basically just like the, the assignment operator, except uh, just the core of it, with none of those additional details that we needed to take care of in the assignment operator. Okay, so what that means is that when, I'm, when C++ is making a copy, Instead of just copying the description down like this, it's going to actually create another new array here of size seven. Oops. Right, that's what the description, that's what this line, uh, line 19 does. And then line 20 is going to actually put the word hammer in there. Okay, and then, um, well, I forgot this, this was line, eight, uh, line 19. Okay, so because we've provided this copy constructor now, instead of this being a pointer back up here to the same array that item one was pointing at, it's got its own copy here. So when I so when I call my item dot set info, it's just go, it's going to actually change this to pizza. Okay. Anybody want to ask a question about the copy constructor? Um, what I need to talk, talk about now is when does C++ need to make a copy of an object? Um, it turns out that this is sort of a nice and neat uh, thing because there are exactly three situations in C++ where, the, where C++ needs to make a copy and therefore would call a copy constructor if it exists. So this is um, one of those, another one of those, uh, what did I say, rule of, life, rule of life or something? Um, so it's like, I know there's I've been a lot of those today, but um, this is something that I'm, uh, I'm always a little surprised that students uh, forget this. So I would, this is one of those things I would, uh, you know, if you were making flashcards or something, make sure you've got a flashcard for this. Um, here are the three situations where uh, C++ would call a copy constructor. 
the one we just did was um, the one we just did was um, pass pass by value. Okay. Uh, the second one is initialization. Okay, so what that means is um, if I declare this one, let's hold on a second. Yeah, let me let me let me actually demonstrate that. Um, Yeah, sorry, I'm in trouble. Out of these examples. Oops, I'm do it. Now I just want to. Okay, so obviously what I'm trying to do here is um, item one uh, should, none of this should change item one, right? I'm setting item three equal to item one. And then I am uh, using set info to change item three, but that should not change item one. Okay, and as you can probably guess by now, um, it's going to. Well, no, it, it's actually not going to because, oops, hold on. Because I have a copy, so, so let's see that. Uh, Right, so no problem. Item one is nine hammer. Item one stays nine hammer even after I change item two. But the point is, what if I didn't have a copy constructor? Um, Okay, I'm gonna try it again without a copy constructor. And item one was nine pizza. We already figured, uh, we already know why that happened, right? Um, and then after we set info, um, instead of item one remaining nine pizza, item one becomes nine ice cream, okay? So, Point is, this is an initialization. And when there's an initialization, C uses uh, your copy constructor. 
if you don't have a copy constructor, um, it uses its default copy behavior, which is just a member wise copy. Okay, so let me bring our constructor back. Um, the thing that um, I would expect to someone to have asked me about is, wait a minute, isn't that just an assignment operator? And didn't we already overload the assignment operator? Right? So here's my answer to that question that uh, I was thinking I might get asked. The answer is no. In C++, this is not an assignment. This is an initialization. And in C++, those are two completely different things. Okay, so this does not, overloading your assignment operator is not going to fix that line of code. That line of code invokes your copy constructor because it is not an assignment, it is an initialization. In fact, another way of saying this is, right, these two lines of code are exactly equivalent when they, when they get translated into the machine language by the compiler, they get translated into the same executable. Is that because of inventory item? Yes, it's, well, okay, so I would say that's because it is being declared and assigned at the same time, right? It's being given a value at the same time that is that it is being declared. So I guess that's just another way of saying yes, because inventory item is in front of it. Okay. Um, interesting, just, just a little, I mean, something that sometimes makes this make more, even more sense to students is when I tell them that when I declare, when I declare and initialize um, an int variable or any other kind of variable, I could say exactly the same thing like this. Right. That's just not normally how we write it. But, uh, those two, those two syntaxes. Not sure if that's the right plural, but if those two syntaxes, those two ways of writing it, are exactly equivalent. Okay. Um, so that's the second situation in which C++ uses the copy constructor. The third situation is return by value. Okay. And I say return by value, even though for our purposes, we have never done any other kind of return. So I could have just said return. Um, Maybe I will say that word, return values. When C++ returns a value from a function, what it's returning is a copy of that value. So um, that's gonna also invoke your copy constructor. Any other questions? Okay, so that's the second of the big three. So every time you have a class that uses dynamic memory, you're gonna need an assignment operator overloaded. You're gonna need a copy constructor overloaded. And then the third problem that I'm going to um, attempt to uh, motivate here um, is, oh shoot. Okay, let me try again. I don't know why I would suddenly be cutting out, but um, so the big three, we've talked about two of them so far, right? The assignment operator and the um, copy constructor are the first two of the big three. And 
Uh, we call them the big three because they are the three functions that you always must provide every time you have a class that uses dynamic memory. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at function f over ooh. Let's take a look at function f over here. Um, what happens? Remember that when we um, called function f, um, our copy constructor was called to create this copy of the um, argument. The argument was item one. So here's my item. What happens when we reach the end of function f? Okay. When we reach the fun when we reach the end of function f, what happens is that any local variables are automatically deallocated, right? And uh, my item counts as a local variable, right? It's a parameter, but that just means it's a local variable um, that got passed a value. And so what happens is my item is automatically deallocated which means if I color it yellow because it's deallocated, which means those two memory locations uh, are gonna be now deallocated, right? And then we end the function. And what's the problem here? problem here is we have a memory leak because now there's nothing pointing at this thing, right? So what has to happen here is that, and remember, this is the client code. So we don't want to, we don't want to, and as a matter of fact, we can't require the client programmer to deallocate that before we get the end of the function. So what we need is we need some way in C++ to say, okay, when this object gets to the end of a function, okay, or the more precise way to say that is when this object goes out of scope, but for our purposes, if that's confusing, you can think of it as when this object reaches the end of the function, we need C++ to call a special function so that we can do any deallocating that needs to happen. Okay. That fun special function is called a destructor. And um, you know what, even though there's only six minutes left, my computer is about to die. I just need to take 10 seconds here and plug it in. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, can someone just let me know that you can hear me still? Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so I need to show you how to create a destructor so that we can make it so that we don't get memory leaks when our objects go out of scope. So um, a destructor looks exactly the same as a constructor, except we just put a tilde in front of it. There's never gonna be any parameters in a destructor, okay? So the name of this function is tilde inventory item. That's our destructor. Let's define the destructor. And typically, the, the destructor is going to be pretty simple. Yes. Uh, so there's no return type. It's in the scope of the inventory item class. Name of the function is tilde inventory item. 
no parameters. And uh, it turns out that all we need to do is just delete description, right? That's, that's the only problem is that we needed to deallocate this memory out here before deallocate, deallocating these two, which happens automatically. Okay, that's it. There's our destructor. Any questions about the destructor? Yes, that's number three. Okay. Um, and now just to, just to um, be clear, when is the sucker calling within a function that I don't know why? Uh, it's called at the end of the function and uh, the reason why is I'm not sure I mean, because that because that's how destructors are defined in C++, right? Uh, um, the rule in C++ is that whenever you get to the end of the function, any objects that were defined or allocated on the stack in that function, their destructor is going to get called automatically. Just like when you declare, right? So here we have inventory item my item. We're declaring an inventory item object so the constructor automatically got called, right? And so when when this variable my item goes out of scope or it reaches the end of the function. And the system is going to deallocate this local variable. It's first going to call its destructor. Where is the memory leak? Right. Yeah. See. In, so in this picture, right, that's why that's why we wrote the copy constructor. Right. When we originally wrote this function, we were get, we were, we had this the co the copy was not deep. We were not creating this array. And we had this arrow just pointing up here, and that was causing a problem, right? So we wrote the copy constructor to make it so that we, instead of just moving this pointer up here, we create a new copy of the array and make description point to it. But now the problem is when we get to the end of this function, if there's no destructor, this never gets deallocated. Okay, so that's the job of the destructor. All right. Okay, let me say a couple things about work. Uh, I realize we're out of time, and there's actually a little bit more going on in this lesson. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you're going to be able to just pick it up from the written lesson, um, or I mean, maybe Kyle's can help you out a little bit with it in lab. I'm not sure what his plans are there, but. Um, I think that the rest of the stuff in this lesson is a bit is um, a little more straightforward. Um, there's also uh, videos in uh, Canvas from previous semesters when I have taught this stuff. If you prefer to actually see a video, um, calling the destructor is automatic. You do not call the, the destructor explicitly. It happens automatically when an object goes out of scope, just like a constructor. Um, so let me say a couple words about uh, working with uh, destructors. Um, you know, I would suggest that you might want to just get the entire program working first without your destructor, because often what happens is students will put a destructor in, and the destructor will cause things to break. But it's not because the destructor is wrong; it's because there's something wrong someplace else. Um, so uh, it's helpful in terms of focusing in on uh, where your bugs are if you just get everything working first and then add a destructor. Or, you know, alternatively, if you've got everything down and something's not working and you can't figure out why, just try taking the destructor out 
and then seeing if everything works. So I'll pin down where the error is. Um, so, um, and just I guess another point about the destructor is to point out that you're never gonna be able to tell if you did the constructor, if you, if you forgot to do the constructor, everything is still gonna work perfectly, right? It's one of those few times in programming classes where you can get something wrong and you can't tell that from your output. So you're gonna to have to just be careful about that. All the destructor does is stuff that's going on behind the scenes. Okay, any other questions? I realize we're over by a couple of minutes. Why don't I try to come on my phone for some time to go to the topics for that are the functions? Um, let's, um, let me answer that question. If we look at assignment 10, um, actually lab 10, Um, oh, I guess this isn't, yeah, this, did you see this? Unfortunately, Visual C++ will report an error when you try to use stir copy or stir cat, and here's how to prevent that. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. I think that uh, that's all we have time for. Uh, have fun in lab and I will see you next Monday and I will go ahead and make sure to have all of the um, lessons posted and the, the stuff that was missing from the lab will also be posted uh, as soon as I can get to that.